Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for checking out another video. Today we're going to do um, we're going to do a headlight cleaning, repair, reconditioning. Uh, we know there's there's no shortage of videos on how to do this, and it wasn't something I really intended to do. My buddy Steve Rob up in Canada said I should do one, so I'm going to do one. I'm going to do mine a little bit different. I think a little bit different in the sense that most of the videos that are out there on this and again there's no shortage of them and I'm not here to knock any one of them this is my interpretation of how it should be done or one of one of the very one of the accepted methods and I'm sure there are many what I want to I want to go one step further one thing that I see or I, I don't see in a lot of the videos is an explanation of why certain techniques work, why some don't, and why some only work for a short period of time. What is it that we're actually trying to do to fix this? Um, so I'll see if I can explain it a little bit so you understand what it is you're trying to do when you're doing it. Um, and see if we can get this done pretty simply in a short period of time and make it look pretty decent. So come along, let me explain it, and I hope I get my point across. Um, that's it. Stick around. I want to try to get a, a good before picture. I know sometimes the camera doesn't properly um, depict what the lens actually looks like. Um, surprisingly, it actually looks better through the camera lens than it does person. See if I can move this light around so you can see just how bad the fog, whatever you want to call it, is. It's pretty bad. So let's get into what we're going to do, why we're going to do it, and hopefully it makes sense. Okay, here come my wonderful drawing skills. Ready for this? All right. Two things are happening when the when the lens gets dirty. And if you can understand this, you can understand what it's gonna to take to, to, to make it clear again, or clearer. All right, if we can look at a, a cross section of the lens, not looking through the center of it, but looking at it across, okay? Let's say like this, and like that, okay? Here's your, uh, here's your bulb. Okay, light shining outwards, this is the outside. As long as this remains flat and clean, you can see in it, light will come out of it. What's happening as you're driving, you're creating very small divots and rock holes and, not want to say rock holes, but little gouges in the glass, like that. Now, two things. First, even if it's clean, what that's going to happen is that it's going to deflect, I don't know if that's the right word, it's going to reduce your ability to see clearly through it. You're going to see reflections bouncing, instead of seeing straight through it, you're going to see reflections bouncing this way. So it's going to already start to look, it's kind of like a chip in a windshield. The only reason you can see the chip in the windshield is because there's air in there, and the air blocks your ability to see through it, all right? And that's kind of what's happening here. Second thing. These little, these little holes now fill with dirt. So what are we trying to do? Well, we got to get the dirt out. And then if we can, we need to flatten this back out again as much as we can. And then seal it. That's really in a nutshell. It's really two things. And that's why a lot of these methods that a lot of these guys show is I've seen guys, oh, WD-40, I've seen, I've heard about toothpaste, I've heard, you know, rubbed toothpaste in it. Really what you're doing is you're getting some of the dirt out and you're filling that void with something. And it could be anything. It could be a, a, it could be a wax, it could be toothpaste, it could be an oil-based product like WD-40. It could be anything. And what that does, it reflattens the lens or fills the void with something so that now you can see straight through it. And it stops the light from being deflected, which makes it look foggy or cloudy. God, I hope that makes sense, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three things. 
we're going to clean it, try to get the dirt out. Two, we're going to try to flatten this back out. And then three, we're going to try to put something protective over the top of it. Ready, set, let's go. All right, there you go. If you look real careful, and I'm really, I'm actually using a magnifying glass with the camera lens, you can start to see, that's eh, tough, you can start to see some of the actual thousands of very small indentations in the plastic. And that's probably a better example of what it is we're trying to Eh, what we're trying to fix. It's all of this little, all of those little holes, right there it is, right there. See that? That's what I'm trying to show you. That's the problem. So it's not really a fog as much as it is, it's, it's just a, it's almost like a sandblasted lens. And what I was saying before about filling the voids even without doing anything to this glass without flattening it at all I could take something that's a little soapy water right wash some of the dirt out of there watch what's gonna happen I'm gonna take nothing more than a little sponge a little bit of water and I'm just gonna wipe the dirt out I'm not gonna wash the whole car here just trying to get this lens And already that looks better. But when it dries, it won't. The only reason it looks better right now is because all of those little voids in the glass are now filled with water. And as soon as we get that dry, it'll come back. And that's, again, that's what I'm trying to, what I was trying to explain before. If you can fill, either get rid of the voids, the voids, the, the craters, the little microscopic craters, if you can fill them or get, and or get rid of them, it starts to look clear. What's gonna happen here is, get some thick towel as soon as we start to dry it off it'll start to fog up again uh, well I shouldn't say it's gonna fog up again it will reveal the imperfections that were already there now we're just, we're just taking the water out of it and and again I know it doesn't come out real great on camera but we're pretty much back to where it was other than I've taken some of the dirt out of the lens next step Now I've heard guys talk about using a 2,000 grit, 4,000 grit sandpaper to actually sand it down, which isn't wrong. I don't know if it's completely necessary. I'm always afraid to go that far on a piece of plastic, but you can take a piece of 4,000 grit, something very, very non-abrasive to try to knock this down. I'm gonna go with, I'm using, in case anybody's curious, I'm using Meguiar's. 205 finishing polish and we're going to try to knock this down and let's see how flat we can get it And you don't have to spend a lot of money. This is a Harbor Freight 6 inch random orbital Chicago Electric. I think I paid 50 bucks for it. I'm not doing this on a professional level. So that works just fine for me. Let's see if we can take some of this out. And already it looks much better. Two things have happened. I've taken the, taken the craters down a little bit. And then filled it in with polish. So it's 
half fixed and half a, a mirage because I've only filled the craters. I haven't actually gotten rid of Well, I've taken them down a little bit, but I've filled them. And I can still see a real lot of them right here. And you can keep doing this as much as you want and as ridiculous as it sounds. Grab a magnifying glass if you really want to see it. And you can really start to see the craters. If you want to go backwards, and instead of finishing compound, actually get a, um, instead of getting a polishing compound, actually get a, a rubbing compound. If you want to take this down a little bit heavier, you can do that and just keep going lighter. Um, I don't think it's going to be necessary here. And again, I'm not looking to spend a ton of time on this. Uh, so I do have other work to do. So I'm going to hit, we're going to hit this with a little more polish. I'll fast forward through this and we'll see how it comes, comes out. This looks like. Hang on. And there is still, I could still see it. There is still, I can actually feel it. There's still marks in there, but it looks way better than it did. And again, you can repeat this process as many times as necessary. You want to go backwards in the process and actually go, maybe step up to a 4,000 grit sandpaper. Then go to a rubbing compound and a polishing compound. Again, the idea is just to get this as flat as it's supposed to be and get rid of... Yes, I know it's hard to see on camera, but if you look at it right, you can see the road rash or the debris rash. Real heavy over here. So again, we can keep taking this down as much as we can. You can do this by hand. Obviously, it's going to take way longer. I like the machine because it's faster. Duh. So... Last step is to fill in whatever craters are left and protect it. Because with, without protecting it, dirt's going to stick to it and it's going to look foggy again in a week. And that's with any process that you see. Um, if you don't put something over this, it's going to look foggy. They do sell um, a product called Clear Bra, the Clear Film, there's a whole bunch of them. Obviously, that's ideal. I would recommend that when it's new. This way when it gets messed up, you can peel it off, put a new one down. Um, we, don't ha we don't have that, and you don't have to have that. I'm, I'm literally going to hit this with a little bit of uh, automotive wax. I'm using, in case you're wondering, no, I'm not sponsored by them, but I love this stuff. I love the way it smells. It smells like candy. I want to eat it. You don't need to put globs of, gre of grease. You don't need to put globs of wax on. Not just a windshield, but I'm talking about when you're waxing your car also. Guys tend to think they're going to put a quarter inch thick layer of wax. This is microscopically thin. Whether it be on the headlight lens or the car. So don't go crazy. It's just the more you put on, the more you're going to be rubbing off. It's a little protection. We're going to fill that void in. Those, the voids... The, I keep saying voids. It's more craters. It's craters. It's not voids. Sorry. I'm going to fill those little holes in, the little divots, the scratches. We'll let that set up for a second. All right. Let that dry off a little bit. Whoa. Get my light back. Get all that excess off. Definitely doesn't come off as easy off the car as it does, I mean, off the headlight lens as it does off paint. A little extra rubbing. And that's it. How's that look? A little better. And again, I'm not going to take total credit. It definitely looks better through the camera lens. It does in person. But this thing definitely looks way clearer than it did. And it'll stay pretty clear for a while. Until debris hits it. Until the wax comes off and dirt fills it again. But until then. Alright guys, that's basically it. 
that's it, me cleaning, reconditioning a headlight lens. Lens. I hope that helped. Let me know your comments. Again, I'm not trying to talk down to anybody else that does these. Uh, you know, talk bad about their videos, their techniques. There's a lot of them out there. I'm sure there's others that are way better than mine. Uh, this is just the way I do it. I, it's quick. Without filming, this takes me with setup and cleanup and everything, maybe 10 minutes. I do both of them. You know, I know they sell kits out there, but the kits they sell are basically doing the same thing. They, they got their little uh, thing you put in the drill and, and, and a compound of sorts that they sell. And really all it is, it's a polishing compound. It's any one of them. You can use the fine cut cleaner. You can use, like I said, any, anywhere from the 4,000 grit, 3,000 grit sandpaper to a rubbing compound to a, to a fi uh, finishing polish all the way down to like a fine cut cleaner to really get that thing smooth. As much time as you want to put into it, the better it will, it will look. For me, this looks 90% better than it did. This will look like this for at least five, six months before it starts to get dirty again. If the gentleman cleans it and washes it and waxes it, it'll stay this way even longer. That's it, let me know your thoughts, let me know your comments. I always encourage constructive uh, conversation in the comments section. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate the help. I appreciate the positive comments. You guys give me a lot of good support. I love it. Uh, hit subscribe. Check out my other videos. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great day.